Hello and welcome to Alpha Military TV. Thanks very much for tuning in once again and seeing what we're up to. My name is Richard Saunders. Now, um, a lot of people ask how they can support the channel. And the best and the easiest way, to be honest, is simply to hit the subscribe button. And if you like what you see, obviously, to give us a like as well. But you can also buy us a coffee. The details are down below. Now, the rifle we're looking at today is one of my absolute favorites. In actual fact, um, this is my own rifle. I bought this one. I know, unbelievable. It is a, a Daystate Wolverine R C type. Now, the Wolverine R lineup contains several different models. There's a Wolverine R Highlight, which uh, has a 480cc carbon wrap bottle at the front. There's the B type, which has a, a steel bottle, air bottle at the front. And then there is the C type, which has a, a cylinder, so C for cylinder. And that's a 200cc bottle uh, cylinder. Um, now, obviously, there's differences in, in shot counts, uh, and we'll go through that later. But I think that the, the addition of this cylinder with this black polymer cage gives the rifle more of a traditional sporter uh, kind of look to it. Now, the C type is only available at 12 foot pounds in 177 and 22. The B type and the highlight models. They're available also in 2.5 calibre and 30 calibre and at much higher power levels as well, FAC uh, rifle power levels. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work, uh, work from the rifle from back to front as we usually do. Uh, we'll talk about some of the key features. We'll go into the whole uh, pellet loading, magazine loading, magazine inserting into the breech process and talk about how to fill it up with air as well. And then we'll go down the range and we'll see how it shoots. The Wolverine RC type is one of those rifles that looks a lot bigger and heavier than it actually is. Now there's an awful lot of wood going on on this stock. I mean, the, 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 the stock here from here to here is quite deep. You know, there's an awful lot of wood going on. It's, it's gorgeous wood, but there's lots of it. And that kind of gives it a sort of makes it look a little bit heavy. Now, the absolute opposite is true in actual fact, because this rifle measures only 965 millimeters long not including the, the silencer. And that includes a 480 millimeter or 17 inch barrel, but it only weighs three and a half kilos, which is fairly standard. So you know, it's actually pretty compact. And yeah, it's about average weight for most rifles in this class, to be honest. Um, now you can get this rifle either with this uh, gorgeous walnut stock or in a, a gray laminate stock as well. Exactly the same shape and everything, just gray laminate. And both are designed by uh, Minelli in Italy. And they are finished off superbly well and really well thought out from, from an ergonomic perspective as well. And the rifle is also completely ambidextrous. You know, the safety catch is located in the center of the rifle up here. And the, the side lever, you can swap that over to the left hand side if you're a lefty or you prefer to cock left handed. Although I understand that is more of a factory option than something that you're encouraged to do as a DIYer in your garage. Now in terms of cost, again, this is one of those rifles that seems to vary quite a bit in cost, um, possibly because it's been out for a little while, but I've seen this rifle on sale for you know, north of 1,500 pounds. I've also seen it on sale for 1,250, 1,270 pounds. So it's one of those rifles that you really want to shop around with and make sure that you get the best deal. So in terms of features, Starting at the back, you have this curved rubber uh, butt pad or shoulder pad, and it's very comfortable in the shoulder. There's a screw in the middle here, and if you slacken that off, this rear section will move up and down. And then if you take it off completely, this central section here has a couple more screws inside it. And if you slacken those off, you can put some angle into the, uh, the butt pad as well, which is really good. Now, um, a lot of people have written or have said that they find it difficult to get good shoulder fit and eye alignment on the Wolverine. I don't understand it myself. It fits me like an absolute glove. This uh, cheek piece is fixed. There's no adjustment in it, but obviously you have adjustment in the shoulder here. And I find that it's yeah, the eye alignment, um, the, the, uh, the shoulder fit is, is really, really good. Now you have a uh, quite a, a pronounced scoop at the bottom of the butt here. Obviously that saves a little bit of, of, of weight. And it also adds to the aesthetic of the rifle as well. But I also, I've also found that when shooting on the range, you know, your non-trigger hand um, 
you know, can rest underneath here really comfortably. So yeah, it's, it's a really good uh, and quite subtle feature that. There's a nice big cutout for your hand just here. You know, even people with massive grip hands will be able to get their, their mitts through that. And then the, the pistol grip itself has a stippling on the pistol grip here. And there's also some finger contours as well. Makes it a very, very comfortable uh, pistol grip to hold. There's also a, a channel just here, either side, which kind of guides your trigger finger towards the trigger. And then there's a couple of scoops just up here, which enables you to shoot either with a, with a thumb up grip or with a thumb wrapped around grip. Both are very, very comfortable. Now, forward and above the, the, the pistol grip is the safety catch. And it's a switch type catch. You press it to the right to make the rifle live. And there's a little red dot gets exposed in here to tell you that the rifle's live. And then you push it across from the right to the left to make the rifle safe. The trigger is a match style post and shoe trigger. It's very, very comfortable, very, very precise. Two stages, um, very adjustable as well for both the stages and the angle of the shoe as well. And there are holes underneath the trigger guard here, which gives you access to the adjustment up here. And in actual fact, the day state manual gives you really good, precise instructions on how to change the first and second stage uh, stages of the trigger. Really, really good. There's a like a shallow scoop on the, uh, the fore end here, which has more stippling in as well. And then you have this sort of uh, swoop up here, which adds a little bit of aesthetic value to the rifle as well. And as I say, superbly thought out, very ergonomic, uh, and, and you know, beautifully designed as well. Now the side lever is, it's not sprung at all. It's a mechanical side lever. And, you know, this is a mechanical rifle. It's not a, one of Daystate's electronic rifles. And it has two stages. So the first stage is there, then the second stage, pull it back a little bit further so it clicks. And then obviously you push it forward uh, and that probes a pellet through the magazine. Now the, the magazines that ship currently with, with Daystate models are the newer design, they are uh, self-indexing magazines and they have a gate system um, on the front uh, for, for loading and we'll show you the magazine loading in a little bit more close up in just a little while. Uh, it takes 11 shots in 2.2 and 13 shots in 177. Now the magazine does sit proud of the action and the magazines are a little bit higher than the ones that they replaced which means that you will need to choose your mounts with care. Now these are, I believe, uh, mid, uh, uh, medium mounts. And this is a, an MTC Optics Cobra F1 scope. And it has a bit of a saddle under, uh, underneath it, underneath here. So um, you have to choose your mounts with care to make sure that you will uh, clear this, uh, this saddle in terms of how far back you want to mount the scope and also will give you enough height uh, to clear the magazine as well but there's plenty of room on the rail to move your scope up and down. Now on this side, and we'll show you this in close up, you have a couple of gauges. There's a gauge uh, for your overall fill pressure. Now this particular rifle takes a 250 bar fill and all day state rifles come with a little, uh, a little disc on, again on this side, show again in a minute, which shows you what the optimum filling pressure is for your rifle. Now most of the time they're about 250 bar some of them are 230 bar. It makes no difference in terms of the power or the shot count. It's just what the optimum fill pressure is for your particular rifle. And then the second gauge on this side is a gauge which shows the, uh, the pressure in the regulator. Like all Daystate rifles, the Wolverine RC type is fitted with a Humor Air regulator as standard. And although that, that gauge doesn't really do anything, it just tells you what the, the regulator pressure is. Um, yeah, that should never change. It does help with you identifying any issues with the rifle. If the regulator pressure gauge suddenly goes higher or suddenly goes lower, then there's, there's something that you need to look at in the rifle. Now on the front of the, of the stock here, you have this black polymer uh, cage, if you like. Uh, and I believe that's borrowed from the Daystate Pulsar, the bullpup. And that um, houses this 200cc bottle um, and, and really finishes off the rifle quite nicely. You know, you don't get that kind of exposed bottle, exposed cylinder look that you do on some rifles because of this gauge. And then there's a short molded uh, Picatinny accessory rail just underneath, underneath here 
for you to put a, a bipod on. Um, the barrel itself, as I said, 480 millimeters long or 17 inches, fully shrouded as well. And it is threaded on the end, as you would expect, to take a silencer. Now, I have to say this rifle is actually quite quiet um, with, without a silencer. You know, just the shroud does a pretty good job. But if you're going to be hunting or if you're going to be shooting in the garden, let's say, then it is worthwhile investing in a silencer. Now, in terms of shot count, you can expect around about, um, where's my notes? Around about 250 shots from this in 2.2 caliber and around about 200 shots in 177. Um, and don't forget, this rifle is only available as a 12 foot pound rifle, 177 or 22. Okay, I think that's everything. What we do now is we'll look at some of those key features in close up. Then we'll talk about the whole magazine uh, loading process and inserting into the breech process. Uh, we'll talk about filling it with air and then we'll go down the range and see how it shoots. Now the Day State magazine is, as I, as I think I said before, self-actuating. By that I mean that it will rotate under a spring under its own power. It doesn't need anything from the rifle to help the magazine rotate. And as you can see, it has this magnetic door on the front of it. And that is the back of the magazine. Now to fill it up, what you'll need to do is just pull that door open and then rotate the magazine round uh, clockwise as far as it will go and then hopefully you can see underneath here the gap between these two holes here is slightly bigger than between the other holes so you're just in there so what you need to do is put a pellet in nose first to the left of that hole of that gap and that will then hold the magazine that center drum in place and then it's just a case of dropping the pellets in one by one all the way around. Now, I've noticed that some of the pellets will drop all the way down into the bottom of the chamber like that one there, whereas others will sit on the top. Now, I don't know if it makes any difference at all in terms of, of accuracy, but what I tend to do is just give them a little push down um, with my finger or with another pellet or a twig or something just to make sure that they're all seated at the bottom of the chamber. Then once you've done that, simply close up the magazine, uh, flap again, and then it's ready to go into the breech, which we'll show you next. Now I've taken all the pellets out of this magazine now to make it safe so it's completely empty. And first thing to do is to put your safety catch on so that when you cock the rifle, the rifle is going to be safe. Now all current versions of day state rifles are designed to have the, the magazine go into the breech from the right hand side of the rifle. Now they do that because some people have one of those large oversized parallax adjustment wheels on the left hand side of their scope and with those in place it could be difficult to put, to put the magazine in from the left. So first stage to do is to pull back 
that, uh, that side lever to, to cock the rifle. And then with the gated part of the magazine, that flap facing back towards you, just put it into the right hand side of the breech. Now make sure that you get the flat underside of the magazine level with the, with the, the bottom of the breech and then simply push it in. Now magnets on the, on the, uh, on the magazine will help kind of draw it in and, and, and place it in there. And once it's in, simply return the side lever and you're ready to go. So that's our quick rundown of the Daystate Wolverine RC type. The main features anyway, what we'll do now is we'll nip down the range, put a few pellets through it, show you the air finning process, and then we'll see how accurate it is and what it produces over the chronograph. Well, I've come down to Reading Air Target Shooting Club once again to give the Daystate Wolverine RC type a little bit of a shoot. Now, I set a target out to 30 meters, but before we start, I did say I would talk about the whole air finning process, and it's really, really easy on this rifle. So the fill port is located just underneath here, and there's a plastic magnetic catch that you have to pull off. And then that reveals the, the fill valve underneath here. Now, there's no probe or anything that you have to fit into this rifle. Um, your uh, hose, uh, your whip will connect directly onto this, this, uh, this valve here, uh, be that from your uh, compressor, a bottle or a stirrup pump, just literally snap straight onto there. Then also give the rifle a fill. This one takes 250 bar, but check that little roundel to see what the, the fill pressure is or the recommended fill pressure is on your rifle. And then once you've done that, obviously bleed off, your, uh, bleed off the, the, the whip, remove the line, and then just replace that, that, mag that magnetic cap underneath there. Now I've set the target out to 30 meters. Ordinarily, as you probably know, I use Air Arms Diablo fill pellets in 5.52 size, and they work well in most rifles that I shoot. But for some reason, having pellet tested this one, it doesn't really like those so much, but it does like the JSB Hades in 2.2. Again, they're 5.52 size. So let's see how we get on. Right, well that's all 11 shots, look like I pulled one or two to be honest, but we're going to have a look. Okay, well I did pull one or two there, or maybe there were flyers, wonky pellets, but um, I know I did pull a couple, but the main group, main group has gone through one hole there, that's probably eight pellets through there, and then as I say a couple that I pulled, or wonky pellets or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's uh, 30 meters with JSB Hades 2.2 pellets. Well, that's our review of the Daystate Wolverine RC type. Uh, it's baking hot day today. It must be low 30s today. Whether that affected the accuracy a little bit, I don't know. It certainly affected me a lot. Um, but yeah, superb rifle, really lovely to shoulder, uh, beautifully constructed and accurate as well. On the chronograph, this is putting out 11.65 foot pounds which makes it ideal for pest control and hunting. Anyway, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please hit the like button and don't forget to check out our website, alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching.